imagine what it's like for you to have done 100,000 miles of these. Behind me, you see a Carrera GT. Now, for me, the Carrera GT is one of the greatest cars that was ever produced, one of the most undervalued cars in the world, and just a car that people don't really understand that much. So it's rare that you get the opportunity to talk to an owner, so I thought we'd do an owner's guide to the Carrera GT. So, Andrew, my friend here, at Zalazin, on Instagram, is gonna take me for a little bit of a ride, and we are gonna get an owner's insight at what it's like to own and drive a Carrera GT. You have Mostly to drive, because owning yeah. them is kinda not that much fun. Yeah, but you have nearly 100,000 miles behind the wheel of a Carrera GT. Yeah. Who else has that? Let's hop in the car. sought-after cars, isn't it? So originally a race engine, right, correct? So it was a Le Mans project that died. Right. And they said, we've got this beautiful engine and this great opportunity in this amazing company called Porsche. Yeah. They, uh, they decided to make a street version. Um, monocoque chassis, all carbon fiber, really magnesium, magnesium center, magnesium chassis components, engine bolted into the chassis as a, as a structural element of it. Just a beautiful piece of engineering. It is unbelievable. It looks great inside and out. And what is it like? So the reason we kind of wanted to do this video is to see from a first person point of view what it's like to own and drive one of these cars. You've probably done more miles than anybody in a Carrera GT. I may have. It's um it's an it's it's an experience every single time we get it. Yeah. Every time. The noise! Throws you back, yeah. It pulls you back in. It's the noise, the sound. You can hear the chains and the valves and all the stuff going on behind your head. It's yeah. not as sweet sounding in some ways from the interior, but yeah. maybe more so. And that famous clutch. What's the way to use that famous clutch? It's not to get over, not, not to overthink things, because people think it's the most difficult thing in the world, but it's really not. It's a race clutch. Just don't give it any gas. Your right foot doesn't touch the gas. Okay, so no gas. It's such a beast. Even just those cat size going between the lanes, you feel everything. The mechanical feel on this car, although we started off slow, is in a passenger seat, the push rod suspension. You can feel everything that's going on in the car. You can feel the undulations in the road, the way that it gets communicated back through the steering. You feel it in your bum. You feel it in your hands. You feel it in your ears, your eyes. Everything is alive. Unlike any other car that I've ever driven. Yeah. I've owned some pretty serious stuff. We'll talk about the McLaren F1. We'll talk about, you know, old cars, new cars, everything in between. Yeah. There's nothing like this car. In my, in my experience, it is the best driver's car ever built. There's just nothing that comes close. And I think that it wasn't fully understood for a while, but now people are really starting to realize, like, I don't think any car will ever be like this ever again. No, really. it's impossible. It's the true old analog car. You know, everything is so digital these days. But you think about all that power behind you, the, the way that there's zero inertia, the engine, and the clutch, and everything works together so well. Even have to think in this car, yeah, and you get transported to the next level. I mean, it's it's unbelievable, and to have a manual linked up to a V10, rear wheel drive, and central engine. I mean, that combination has never really been seen since. Was never really seen before. 
And I don't think we'll ever be seen again. Yeah, I don't think so. I think that the D10 is, you know, is a uh, generation gone by. I yeah. can't imagine. The Lexus did it with the LFA V10, but I don't see anybody producing it, anybody interested in doing this engine ever again. It was a Formula One mainstay for years, and the sound that people associate with Formula One was most associated with the V10 engine. Oh, absolutely. But the visibility of this car, the, the steering, and the pushrod suspension really delivers a driving experience and the communication that no other car that I have ever comes close. The CLK GTR that I've driven a little in anger is probably the closest that comes to this. But that car cannot be driven on the street at all. Yeah. So Whereas this, you you drive it, but for not people get scared because of the clutch, because of the fact that there's no nose lift and it's very low. How do you find it is to actually use as you do? I use it. Think about it. It's 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 an occasion every time you get in. Yeah. You look at the steering. You look at the shift knob. It looks a little out of place, but it's not. It falls so easily to have. You yeah. always have it there. It's got the Beechwood 917. Yeah. Um, there it is. Shifter. That's a throwback to the lightweight also kind of wood kind of thing that was going on. It's just everything screams race car. And it really does. So do I. And when I get in it, it's like, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. exciting. It's just like, And even just now, the surface isn't perfectly flat. We can feel everything through the seats, can't we? And you can feel you're making constant adjustments, not because that's a bad thing, it's a good thing. You're always connected. There's no coasting in this car. Yeah. You can't take things for granted. Oh, yeah. yeah. This, is, this is a car to be driven and to be driven hard. You can't be tentative. You grab it by the throat and you just run with it as hard as you can possibly. Absolutely. And as an owner, what is the, the maintenance like on one of these? Do you really need to treat it sort of like a baby and always be taking care of it? No, no, no. Or is it pretty? No, you know, you need to really drive it. These cars, when they sit around, you have issues with camshafts pitting. You have the gas tanks have to be replaced, which is a $30,000 drop because of all the corrosion. Um, if you don't drive these cars, you can have a lot of issues with them. But when you drive them and you use them as they're supposed to be, they really are virtually maintenance-free. Wow. Um, I had an issue with this car with, um, with a couple of different things that needed to be done. The catalytic converter got clogged up because of crappy gas. Yeah. The... Okay, right, so that's not really the car's fault. No, that's yeah, not the yeah. car's fault, but to replace the muffler, yeah. which weighs 75 pounds because it's got so many different um, valves and other kinds of engineering. 75 pounds of exhaust weights. And it costs $22,000. Yeah. 22 grand because of some bad fuel. 22 grand. Wow. And it pushes you back. You were telling me when we had a conversation about this earlier that Despite it not having the most power compared to modern cars, there are still very few cars, if you know how to drive this and you're on a good road, that will keep up with this. Wow! And it's quite snappy, isn't it? When you're... It, it can be. The thing with these, with the Bird GT is that you need to keep the rear wheel spinning. It's like a motorcycle that if you lift your wrist and your left rear wheel is sliding, you'll you'll high side it, so you'll get thrown in the other direction. It's typically what happens with these as well. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So you need to have big balls basically and keep your foot in it. It isn't that. It's just the confidence of the car. Such a beautiful sound as well. You now. I don't know if you, you're okay with me saying this, but you have three of these. So you're clearly a big fan of it. And every single time I think about what new car am I going to get, what new thing, I'm like, I just want one of these every place I look. Yeah, very true. Sure. And I mean, it's just over 600 horsepower, right? Just over 600 horsepower, but it's not about zero to 60 times. It's not about quarter mile times. It's about how much power this thing just, just keeps making. And I 
it just is fluid. It just makes the power. And it's, it's quite like linear, it feels, yeah. Yeah, and the steering, is the steering very direct? Very direct. Yeah. You are, everything you touch, everything you do, it tells you almost what it needs to do in order to do what you want. It kind of, it's connected to your brain. We talked about the Scuderia where the accelerator is connected to your smile. This is like my fingertips tingle. Yeah, when I drive this, when I hear the sounds, when you're driving it. But it's really not a hard driving car. If you're driving along in the passenger, you yeah. feel things, but it's not harsh yeah. at all. It's very, very... Is it a predictable car? It, or will it... I mean, it will bite your head off, right? It has a reputation for biting your head off. If you keep this car in motion, if you keep the rear wheel sliding, you will always be fine. The second you lift, you have massive 335 section rear tires, all the weight, everything in the back. The pushrod suspension has so much grip that if you are... The, the car is starting to slide, and it, it won't do anything other than what you want it to do. You can steer with your hands. You see, yeah. I don't even grip the steering wheel. Yeah. You steer it with the rear sliding around. It's so simple and so connected and so visceral. When you start lifting, that's when you run into problems. When you're tentative, that's when you run into issues. Yeah. But when you're not, when you're on it, and when I really drive this hard, it's late braking, rotating, accelerating, going, going, going. Yeah. It's just the feedback is like it's a it's like it's a two thousand pound car. It's wow. so light, it's so good, it fits around you, and everything does what it's supposed to do. As long as you're committed to the actions, you're committed to the turns, you're committed to doing what you need to do, then, then it's a beautiful thing. I and mean, if you're driving it in a tentative way, it's not. It's not, yeah, I see what you mean. I mean, it certainly has a sense of occasion, and I can just tell by looking at you, I mean, I'll point this camera there now, everything's where it needs to be. The gearbox looks like it's in a slightly odd place, but it's right where you want it, isn't it? Uh, and everything feels quality and from a passenger seat few other cars that give you such a sense of occasion as you were saying oh yeah it's got a lot of grip as well a lot of grip bolted us to a rocket ship. And when you're in the GT2 RS, you know, arguably it's got more power. But will you push back any more at the seat? Uh, I don't know. And it doesn't necessarily, it's much more numb. So it doesn't feel like you're getting pushed back as much. Even though you, maybe you are, you probably are getting pushed back a lot more. I can't even... Um, Imagine what it's like for you to have done 100,000 miles in these. You always want more. That's the thing about a great thing. It's you want, you're left wanting more. It's, it's relationships, it's business, whatever it is. You know, never overstay your welcome. This car never overstays its welcome. You're always just wish you had another 10 or 15 or 50 miles in it. You know, when you spent all the time in weekends, and I've spent time on rallies, yeah. you know, four or five days with this car. And I walk away and I still turn around saying, I want more, I want more. Yeah. And there are very, very few experiences in life where that's the case, you know, a, a beautiful bottle of wine, an incredible woman, you know, whatever it is, yeah. those are the rare moments in life. Those are the things you want to hold on to. And that's the thing about this car, it's, it's that, it's so incredible. That, you know, and a little bit of the fact that it can bite you, a little bit of the fact that my son calls it, you know, a widow maker, the fact that the unfortunate, you know, history that it has where where folks have passed on as yeah. a result. You know, this is part of its lore, it's part of its history, it's part of what makes it you feel know. so and you respect this car a lot. We did a comparison video of the 911R and the GT2 RS, 
and we said that we respected the GT. Well, I said I respected the GT2 RS, but I wanted the 911R. Whereas I feel like this car has both of those. I want it, and I hugely respect it. And that's something really special. And as you said, it's like something that leaves you wanting more. This feels like the experience of this car is like going to the best party, going home with a Victoria's Secret model, and at the same time having the best bottle of wine all in one go. That's the best way I could possibly describe it. waking up the next morning it. completely sober, not wanting to chew your arm off and not no. having a headache. It's and the like, Victoria's Secret model ended up bringing 10 of her friends back with her. That's this car. <laughs> and on that jolly note, thank you, Andrew. Well, thank you. Because it has been an incredible experience today. <laughs> we filmed seven videos. Wow. In two languages. We have filmed about 14 videos in a day. Thanks to you, thanks to your collection, and we're also doing a video talking to Andrew about his entire collection because there are some pretty tasty things in there. So if you want to know exactly all of the cars that you have, why you got them, what you may be getting, what you'll sell, what you'll never sell, that is going to be another video. So thank you so much. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right, brother. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Remember to subscribe, like, follow Andrew. It's at Zalazin on Instagram, and I'll be seeing you again very very soon cheers guys bye bye